Xavius blinked his artificial ruby eyes at the fiery portal, feeling really pleased with himself. He was the Great One's most favoured. Once the way was opened, he would surely receive ultimate power. But the Highborn was still failing to open the way, which was bloody annoying. Not just to Xavius, but to two others as well. Firstly, Queen Ashara. She was getting very impatient for the dawn of her perfect paradise, a world where only night elves existed. The best race, in her opinion. She probably wouldn't be in such a rush though, if she knew that Xavius planned to take her as his consort once all was said and done. And the other angry, frustrated person was Hakar the Houndmaster. He was now pacing beside the Highborn Sorcerers, critiquing their work and giving them the odd slap here and there. And thanks to that helpful assistance, the Highborn managed to bring forth a whopping four new members of the Great One's host, Felguards. The Great One fulfills his promise to you, Lord Night Elf. Command them. They are yours to do as you please. And Xavius knew exactly what to do with them. They will best serve as a gift for the Queen. I shall make them honoured bodyguards for Ashara. And so, Xavius buggered off to get right on that. Mistress, forgive this humble one, but the Lord Counselor requests an audience with yourself. He's brought something of interest to you. The Queen pursed her lips and pondered for a moment. Make him wait five minutes, then grant him entrance. So, the attendant turned and exited the chamber, and exactly five minutes later, Lord Xavius entered. My darling Lord Counselor, you must have something of vital importance to say to me, to request an audience at such an hour. Lord Xavius then took a knee. Light of lights, cherished heart of the people, I am grateful for this time given me. I apologise for disturbing you, but I've brought with me a most interesting gift. A gift truly worthy of the Queen of the Night Elves, the Queen of the World. May I summon it? Xavius glanced up and noted that the Queen's interest was well and truly piqued. Good. I grant you the honour of presenting me with your gift. Xavius then rose, turned to the doors and snapped his fingers, and four Felguards then marched into the Sanctum, causing Ashara to lean forward, utterly fascinated. What are they? They are yours, my Queen. The protection of your life is their duty, their only reason to exist. Behold your Majesty your new bodyguards. How wonderful. How very fitting. Your gift is acceptable. I'm pleased that you were pleased. The Queen stepped towards the towering figures and inspected each of them. Are there more? There will be, eventually. <sighs> so few, after so long. How would the Great One himself come through if we cannot manage more than a few of his host at a time? We draw from the well as best we can, O glorious queen. But there are contradictory currents, influence, of other spellcasters elsewhere. Ashara gently brushed her hand over one of the Felguard's pecks, to which the creature hissed slightly, but that reaction only seemed to amuse the queen. Then why haven't you cut off the well from these outside influences? It would make your task much simpler. Xavius opened his mouth to explain why it wasn't that simple, before realising that actually, it was. Truly you are the Queen. Of course I am, darling Counselor. There's only ever been, only ever will be, one Ashara. Now, is there anything else? Nothing, for now, my Queen. Well then, I think you must have more work to do. Xavius bowed, and then buggered off. He wasn't pissed off at her regal tone or shitty attitude, mainly because of her suggestion. Cut off the well from interference. It was certainly doable. With use of the well limited to only those within the palace, the power within would be more easily manipulated. It would cause absolute havoc to the rest of the Night Elf people, but big whoops. Meanwhile, he is definitely one of us. Somehow I know this as well as I know myself. Crisis stared at the floor thinking about how ironic those words were. What else do you say about him? He's old. Very old. Something in his eyes. His eyes. What about them? The young dragon jerked back a bit. Forgive me. My head is adult. 
I'm not worthy of being in your presence at this time. However, Alex Strauser wasn't going to accept that. Look at him, my mate. I ask you this one last thing. With what little you know, would you trust the word of this one? I... Yes, my Alex Strauser. I would. Suddenly, a curious thing happened to Krasis. Whilst the two dragons conversed about him as if he wasn't in the room, he could feel a sense of strength building inside him. Not quite a full return to normal, but closer. And at the same time, his younger dragon self was also displaying signs of being healthier. He was standing taller now, with a bit of colour returning to his scales. So I wanted to hear. Is there anything else you wish of me? My strength is better, being with you. Being of assistance to you has heartened me. Always the poetic one, my loving Coriel Strauss. Yes, I wish much more of you. I know it will be difficult, but I must ask your presence when I bring this one before the other aspects. That statement shocked both versions of Krasis, but the younger incarnation spoke first. You would convene a gathering of the five over this one. Why? Because he's told a story that they must hear. One I tell you now, and you may answer again afterward as to whether you trust him or not. Finally, Krasis thought, his earlier self would learn the truth. But, just as he had startled Ronin a few chapters ago by leaving out crucial parts of their story to Cenarius, Alex Strauser now did exactly the same thing, leaving out the mage's true identity entirely. However, this was Alex Strauser, his love, his life. So, Krasis went ahead and stayed quiet. An astonishing tale. I would have trouble believing it from any mouth but your own, my queen. Has your trust in him faded? No. If you think he should be brought before the others, then so be it. Will you fly with me then? But I'm not one of the five. I'm merely me. <laughs> and thus you are as worthy as any of us. If I am as strong as I now feel, I will gladly fly at your side. Thank you. That is all I ask. The two dragons then nuzzled heads for a moment, whilst Krasis felt another, somewhat peculiar twinge of jealousy. Obviously, Alex Straza was in a number of open relationships, but being cucked by yourself hit differently. It was weird. But Coriel Strauss then buggered off, and as soon as he was gone, Krasis felt lightheaded and weak again. The two parts made whole, at least for a time. I don't, and you felt much better in his presence, did you not? Yes. Would I Nos Dormu at this moment? He would understand this more. But, I think, in the earthly realm, no creature can coexist with himself. I believe you and he, being one, draw off the same life force. When you are far from each other, you are halved. But together, the draining is not so terrible. You help each other. So that's why you requested him to come with. Your story must be told, and it will be told better if he is near. As to your unspoken question, why I did not reveal the truth to him, that is because of what may have to be done to salvage matters. Alex Straza's tone grew grim, confirming a suspicion that Krasis had had since he'd first realised he and Ronin had been displaced. You think it may come to a point where I must be removed, even if it means death? I'm afraid so, my love. I accept the choice. I knew it from the beginning. Then there's only one more matter to discuss. The other who came with you. In his head, Krasis asked Ronin to forgive him, but did not hesitate at all. If it must be done, he will share my fate. He too has those he cares about. He would give his life for them. The Queen of Life then nodded. I trust your counsel. Should the other decide so, he will also be removed. Just know that I will be saddened by this forever. Take no blame unto yourself, my Queen. I will go contact the others. It would be best for you if you wait for me here. In this place you'll find yourself not so weary. Alex Raza gestured, and Krasis went ahead and took a seat in a very comfy part of his queen's nest. And the Dragon Queen then moved to leave, but she paused. I hope you'll be comfortable among the eggs. I'll be careful not to touch any. I'm certain you will, my love. Especially knowing that they are yours. And then the Dragon Queen buggered off. And Krasis kind of just stared at all the eggs around him. He wasn't shocked. He had, of course, already experienced the birth of his children, many of them having already grown to adulthood in his time. But he still felt proud, all the same. However, 
He was also a little bit sad and conflicted. Deep down, he knew it was right to not tell Alex Straza about the future. Not just about the imminent invasion from the Burning Legion, but also what happens to her in 10,000 years' time. The fact that she becomes a slave, and their children the war dogs of a conquering race. But right or not, he still felt like an absolute shit husband 